First up is Harleap's new hidden vulnerability. In patch 7, Larian has updated protection from evil and good to now completely protect against Incubus Charm, which is used exclusively by Harleap. The spell requires concentration, but while it's on, Harleap cannot use Incubus Charm on anyone with this spell. This makes the Harleap fight extremely easy since your teammates being charmed was really one of the biggest threats. Clerics, Warlocks, and Wizards will all get the spell at level 1, Paladins at level 2, and you can also get protection from evil and good from the ever seeing eye which is an amulet in the hag's lair in act one and of course you can also use the scroll of it which works just as well but it is super helpful highly recommend you try it out and next up is how to get the gondian steel watcher to join you this incredible machine has a number of powerful abilities including abilities a normal steel watcher actually wouldn't have the first of which is reprimand a literal uppercut which deals 9 to 30 bludgeoning damage that knocks targets prone. It also has Reposition Malfactor, which is a grappling hook that pulls enemies to you, which also deals 3d8 bludgeoning damage. And as a bonus action, it can use Seeker Matrix, which allows it to see invisible creatures and possibly reveal them to others. And in addition to all that, it also has its regular attack, which we all know and love, which deals 7 to 40 slashing damage and can knock a target prone and cause maim, which makes the target immobile for two turns. It also has the same health points as a typical Steel Watcher, and when that HP is reduced sufficiently like your typical Steel Watcher, it will begin its self-destruct sequence, dealing massive damage upon completion. Now, to get the Gandian Steel Watcher under your command, you need to complete the quest Save the Gandians. However, based on my testing, you actually need to save all the Gandians. Now, if you don't save them all, Xanner Tubin will actually be very happy that you saved those that you did, but will actually complain that there are so few of them that remain, and you actually won't have the Gandhian Steel Watcher at your disposal in the final fight. So if you want to have it, you have to make sure to save them all. And next up is how to summon Maklumpa's army. Maklumpa's army exists of seven allies. One champion of Maklumpa, which will smite enemies dealing significant damage. You will have four proselytes of Maklumpa and two devotees of Maklumpa. The champion and devotees are actually Swagans, which are strong, but the proselytes are Kuatoa, mainly good for your enemies to get a good fish fry going. Now, to be able to summon Maklumpa's army in Act 1 within the Festering Cove of the Underdark, you will find a group of Kuatoa worshipping Bual. If you choose the Investigate option to understand what's going on, you can discover Bual is nothing more than a common red cap. If you then choose the Performance Dialogue option, you can trick the red cap into losing his disguise. Once revealed, you can choose the Dialogue option that you will kill him and claim the power for yourself, and then combat will ensue between just you and Bual. If you defeat him, the Kuatoa will name you their god and give you your true name, which is Maklumpa. They will then ask, what is your first commandment? And if you tell them to go out and build you an army, they in fact will, and you can summon them during the final fight. And next up is a new trader trick that works in patch 7. If you want any item from any trader without paying for it, all you need to have is a level 3 Pact of the Blade Warlock. Simply bind your most expensive weapon, select it, and another item, and then click Add to Wares on both of them, then go to a trader and and open the barter menu and click add wares to offer. This adds your packed weapon and you can then barter anything you want and the weapon will stay with you even after you submit barter. This means you can buy things then get the gold back instantly over and over until the trader has nothing left that you want. You can also use this to improve the attitude of the trader if you barter your bound weapon over and over. It's kind of funny to imagine the traders just getting happier and happier to keep getting the same weapon that somehow you keep trading to them but hey somehow it works. Although you do have to have a warlock in your party, you could also use a hireling. And next up is a new armor that was secretly added in patch 7. This armor is called the Bandit's Armor, and to get it to appear is actually very, very rare. You'll need to deliberately remove all of Shadowheart's armor and weapons so that she has no equipment on while you're still on the Nautiloid. Then, when you land on the Ravaged Beach, you'll need to either just walk by Shadowheart, or you'll need to talk to her and deny her request to join your party. Then later, when you find her in the Grove, she will be wearing the Bandit's Armor. This is the the only way to ever see this armor, which was just added in patch 7. And unfortunately, this armor is worse both in appearance and in AC compared to her usual chain shirt, the bandit's armor only having 11 AC. The same goes for her weapon and shield, and also equipment is also given to Lazel if you do the same exact thing. She will get an armor called hide armor, but that can be obtained through other methods than this, making the bandit armor one 
that not many players have ever seen. And next up is a new dialogue that has been added in Patch 7 if you return Maul's eye patch to her in Act 3. Within the Mind Flayer colony, Balthazar's laboratory contains an eye patch. This is in fact Maul's and when picked up, your character will make a comment on it depending on if you talk to Maul before. Then later in Act 3, when you talk to Maul in the Guild Hall beneath Baldur's Gate, the titular city, there will be a dialogue option telling her that you found her eye patch in Moonrise Towers and asking how she managed to escape. Maul's new dialogue is her boasting that she escaped the hells when El Terrell fell and that compared to that, Moonrise was child's play. There's no follow-up dialogue related to the eye patch, such as asking how her eye came back, so other than that one line, the initial conversation with Maul is mostly the same. And next up is some new hidden dialogue added to Ward Magmar in the Grimforge. Now the only way to trigger this hidden dialogue is if you are playing as a short race, and by choosing the dialogue option, asking how they can get a slave like they have, they'll explain to you that they are all over the place and all you need to do is pin one down. But at your size, it might be tough and that he'd pay money to see you try. And next up is improved lumbar support. In the patch 7 notes, Larian mentioned that lumbar will now stand still after you paid him to hit him. Not knowing who lumbar is or that you could pay him to hit him, I was intrigued. Right next to the Basilisk gateway point in Act 3 is Lumbar who is just lumbering around. And you can actually now see a citizen hitting him who must have just paid for his service. And Lumbar just rejuvenates himself, which makes sense after all considering what he truly is. So if you talk to Lumbar and pay to hit him, I actually tested it and he in fact will stay still after you pay to hit him. I never hit him prior to the patch, so I'm assuming he would have run away if you hit him pre-patch 7, but this new change is pretty neat. And next up is an update to the reward for saving Oscar Favras in Patch 7. One of the most annoying quests in Baldur's Gate 3, by saving Oscar Favras in Act 1 from the Zentrum, you can then later save him again in Lady Janeth's estate. Oscar will finally paint you a portrait when you do so. However, now in Patch 7, it will now be a portrait of the character who initiated dialogue with Oscar to claim the reward. This means you can get a portrait of any character you want, any companion you Want. And while the portrait is the same art as the party view on the left of your screen, it is still cool that you can now get a portrait of any companion you'd like instead of it always being your Tav. And next up is a hidden reward added in patch 7. This reward is so hidden, 99% of players won't even notice if they got it, and it was sneakily added in patch 7. This reward is called No One Left Behind and is awarded if you defeat the goblins attacking the Emerald Grove when you first encounter it if there are no losses on the tiefling side, cannon excluded, he is destined to die. Now it's not very difficult to do, but it is very difficult to tell if you even got this inspiration because the moment the fight ends, you get the inspiration, it's on your screen for about half a second, and then this cinematic begins at pretty much the same time. So basically, you need to make sure you have at least one party member with a soldier background, which actually Lazel has, so it's not a bad idea to have Lazel in your party for that first fight at the Grove for this super hidden inspiration point, which didn't actually even exist until patch 7. 